Hello students. So in the previous class, we have started the process of replication. In the today's class, uh, just we'll do the revision of the replication. Then uh, we'll uh, go for the DNA proofreading. Okay. So that uh, class we are going to see in the today's. That is the previous class revision. And also the proofreading, DNA proofreading we'll see. And also we are going to see the experimental proof for uh, DNA replication. That also we are going to see in the today's class. So yesterday I have told you about the replication process. What I have told you yesterday's class, that is the replication process. So what is replication we have understood? It is the process where the daughter DNA is produced which is exactly similar to the parental cells. The daughter cells are produced which is similar, exactly similar to the parental cell or we can say identical to the parental cell. That is called as what? Replication. And this replication occurs during the S phase of interphase. The replication occurs during the S phase of interphase. And uh, here, this uh, there are uh, basically three types of replication we are going to see. It is conservative, semi-conservative and the dispersive method of replication. Conservative means both the DNA strands are transferred to the daughter cells. That is called as what? Conservation. Conservation of the hereditary characters, what do we say? Also, I have told you the example of the bacteria in yesterday's class. Then dispersal means complete new DNA synthesis we are going to see there. And uh, here we are going to see more amount of genetical changes and morphological changes in the dispersal method of replication. Whereas uh, in the semi-conservative method of replication, we are going to see that half of the parental DNA is shifted to the daughter DNA. That means two strands of the DNA will be there. Among those two strands, one of the strand is shifted to the daughter DNA and the other DNA in the daughter cell has to be synthesized in a new condition. So that is why we will call this process as a semi-conservative replication. So also I have told you the definition of the semi-conservative replication also. What is the definition says here semi-conservative replication that is it is a process where half of the parental DNA is shifted to the daughter DNA or we can say retained in the daughter DNA and uh, this process is uh, another DNA in the in this process another uh, daughter DNA has to be synthesized by itself that is why we will call this as a semi-conservative replication. Now for this in the yesterday's class we people have seen the requirements is it not a requirements what do people have seen in the semi-conservative replication in the yesterday's class what requirements we have seen students that is first of all the deoxyribose nucleotides are required that is DAMP, DGMP, DCMP and DTMP so all these nucleotides, you have to remember, you should remember these nucleotides or we can say you should remember the first class of the uh, D, uh, molecular biology there when people have seen the nucleotides, examples of nucleotides. So here also the nucleotides are required, then ATP is required, ATP that is adenosine triphosphate and magnesium ion and also the enzymes are required. Okay, also the enzymes are required. Now students, enzymes are of six types. Okay, enzymes are of six types. That is the helicase enzyme. First one is the helicase. So what helicase enzyme will do? It unwinds the helix of the DNA. It is the rotation of the DNA is stopped over there or it will reverse direction. Or that is the, it is unwinding we will say. Okay. So when there is an unwinding of the DNA helix, we are going to see that the loop or bubble formation is going to occur in them. Okay. So this is the loop or bubble formation. What do we say? Loop or bubble formation is going to occur in them. 
okay and after the loop or bubble formation the second enzyme is going to come that is topo isomerase or dna gyrase so this is the topo isomerase second enzyme or it is also called as what dna gyrase what do we call for this it is also called as dna gyrase now students this topo isomerase or dna gyrase function is to break and reseal the dna strand what is the function of the topo isomerase and dna gyrase it is to break and reseal the dna strand so here students we are going to see that after the formation of the loop or the bubble the topo isomerase will come and it will break that loop or bubble so after breaking what happens it is just looking like a y shaped strand stranded okay it is just looking like a y shaped structure okay so that is why that is why we will say that y shaped structure as the replication fork what we will say here students we are going to say it as a replication fork okay what shape what fork it is replication fork why because that is the point where the replication starts that is the point where the replication starts cut now we will take this only as a separate structure you can see the two strands like this already have drawn in the yesterday's class once again i am repeating for you people in the today's class so here it is a y shaped replication fork you will see this is that okay then third enzyme that is dna polymerase one we will say now dna polymerase one is the enzyme which is acting as a repair enzyme now students if your bike has been uh, got punctured or uh, if your cycle has got punctured cycle tire has got punctured then what you will do you will uh, take that to the mechanic and garage and just you will get repair it okay they will repair it and they will give you a set of likewise here also at the time of replication if any material is left over there in joining then this dna polymerase one is acting as a repair enzyme dna polymerase one is acting as a repair enzyme suppose if any joining has been missed if any nucleotides has been missed then that is filled by this enzyme called as dna polymerase one hope so you have understood what is the function now one more enzyme is there that is the dna polymerase 3 dna polymerase 3 now dna polymerase 3 what it will do it is catalyzing the reaction from the 3 prime end to 5 prime end or uh, that is 3 3 to 5 to 5 to 3 okay that means for example uh, what we will say see here the 10 numbers will take 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 it is in the reverse direction is it not so this eight sign what it will do it will change the direction okay in the ascent so it is in the descending order it will do that in the ascending order that is the example i am speaking it is not the way to explain that but for you people to understand the example i am taking here suppose in case the numbers are in ascending order sorry descending order this enzyme will come and it will change the direction right from the ascending to the descending it will be, uh, make that okay that is the main function of the dna polymerase three enzyme that is it changes the direction from three to five to five to three okay it changes the direction from three to five to five to three that is the function of the dna polymerase three enzyme now so here how they are used in this replication fork that we are going to see so here students what happens the y-shaped replication fork has been formed in this one is called as leading strand 
already have told you what is the leading strand here already why it is called as leading strand because the half of the parental dna is already shifted to the daughter dna okay half of the parental dna is already shifted to the daughter dna that is why we will say that that means the one strand of daughter dna is ready now okay one strand of daughter dna is ready so that is why we will say that it is the what leading strand or continuous strand okay next another strand is called as lagging strand what the another strand it is called it is called as what lagging strand lagging strand is also called as what discontinuous strand what lagging strand is also called discontinuous strand now this discontinuous why do we say it as a discontinuous or lagging lagging means what remaining behind okay remaining behind means that is he is uh, just uh, lagging uh, it is he back we will say he he or she will be back or it is back we will say remaining behind we will say okay so that what happens to that in that strand exactly okay so here one more enzyme is there that is called as rna polymerase okay the fifth enzyme name is rna polymerase so this rna polymerase what it will do it will utilize the parental dna another strand of parental dna what the rna polymerase will do it will utilize the another strand of parental dna and it is uh, synthesizing the small small rna fragments what it is synthesizing it is synthesizing the small small rna fragments these are called as rna primers what these are called these are called as rna primers how these rna primers has formed using the parental dna this parental dna is utilized by the enzyme this parental dna is utilized by the enzyme and here we are going to see that there is a formation of the small uh, small small fragments of the uh, rna in 3 dash to 5 dash direction which direction 3 dash to 5 dash direction so we don't want rna whether we want rna or dna we want the dna but here the rna is are formed what happens now what i have told you dna polymerase 3 will come what the dna polymerase 3 will do it will change the direction of the primers change the direction of primers so how it will change the direction from where to where from 3 dash to 5 dash from 3 dash to 5 dash to 5 dash to 3 dash from where to where they are going to change from 3 dash to 5 dash to 5 dash to 3 dash direction these are going to change okay so after that after the dna polymerase 3 okay after the dna polymerase 3 what happens these rna has converted to dna why rna is converted to dna how it is converted into dna that is by the dna polymerase 3 how the rna primers are formed that is by the rna polymerase rna polymerase utilizes the parental dna forms the small small rna fragments and after the formation of the small rna fragments the changes of the direction is done by the dna polymerase 3 so the DNA polymerase 3 what it will do it will change the direction from 3 dash to 5 dash to 5 dash to 3 dash so these are the small fragments which are converted from RNA to DNA so these are called as DNA fragments what they are called they are called as DNA fragments and these DNA fragments the small small DNA fragments has been observed by the scientist called as Richi Okazaki. Okay, these small small DNA fragments has been observed by the scientist called as Richi Okazaki, and they are called as Okazaki fragments. What they are called? Okazaki fragments. Now, 
what see in the exam sometimes uh, in the previous year paper and uh, in one of the year paper they have asked that uh, what are okazaki fragments and we, in which strand these okazaki fragments are formed so it, it is nothing but you have to define that okazaki fragments are those are the small fragments which is formed in the lag, uh, lagging strand okay which is formed in the lagging strand during semi conservative replication okay during semi conservative replication and these small dna fragments are first observed by richi okazaki that is why it is called as what okazaki fragments you should give this answer for that question okay now after the formation of the small okazaki fragments or the dna fragments these small dna fragments are joined by the enzyme called as dna ligase dna ligase is the enzyme okay dna ligase is the enzyme which is joining these small fragments of the dna see here these are the small fragments of the dna so these small fragments of the dna are joined by the enzyme called as dna ligase hope so you have understood dna ligase see if any two piece of papers are there so you will take a gum and you will uh, just uh, stick the papers with the help of the gum is it not if any two pieces of cups okay break a piece of cups will be there then you wanted to join that one you will take the paper stick and will join that one so that is called as stitching or joining you will say same here also same here also small small fragments of the dna are there and these dna are separately present so those separately dna fragments are joined by this dna ligase enzyme so they are called as molecular scissors or sorry molecular gum or molecular glue okay what they are called molecular gum or they are called as molecular glue understood after the joining of the two dna strands okay after the joining of the two dna strands sorry small fragments of the dna the daughter dna has been synthesized okay daughter dna has been synthesized now imagine imagine that you people are going to see the daughter dna so this is the newly synthesized daughter dna in the in, in which one of the strand is from parental strand okay in which one of the strand is from parent and the other strand is newly synthesized so one of the strand is from parent other strand is new one new strand and one is parental strand new strand and the other one is parental strand okay now for this new daughter dna the nitrogen basis is required otherwise it will become thread like structure like uh, no uh density at all okay no weightage at all in this dna now to get the nitrogen basis to get the nitrogen basis to get the hydrogen bonds the enzyme will be acting that is pyrophosphatase enzyme okay pyrophosphatase enzyme along with the magnesium ion along with the magnesium ion just they will join with this dna structure and they do the base pairing okay base pairing is done by the joining of the nitrogen bases already you people know the chergolf's rule is it not chergolf's rule says that adenine always binds with thymine by two weak hydrogen bonds and cytosine always pairs with guanine by three weak hydrogen bonds that is the chergolf's rule so chergolf's rule is going to uh, follow here that is pyrophosphatase enzyme and magnesium ion is helping for the joining of the nitrogen bases in the new daughter dna okay after this after this it has to separate from the parental dna okay so new daughter dna is formed here pyrophosphatase and the magnesium ion is helping for the formation of nitrogen bases but it has to separate from the parental dna how it is separated 
that is we can see the last step last step is nothing but termination we will say what is the last step here termination of the semi conservative replication termination means stopping what is the meaning of termination here stopping we will say after the synthesis of the newly daughter dna the process has to stop is it not so for that process of stopping the last step is utilized that is called as termination in that termination we are going to see that formation of ter binding proteins what it is formed here ter binding proteins ter binding proteins means these are the proteins which is stopping the process of semi conservative replication and then the total dna is coming outside from the parental dna okay ter binding protein is going to come so this ter binding protein is nothing but these are the proteins which are uh, helping for stopping the process of semi conservative replication when the daughter dna is coming outside once again the parental dna starts resealing by itself okay starts resealing by itself and then the process of replication is completed over here okay the process of replication is completed over here now students hope so clearly you people have understood this concept called as semi conservative replication hoping that i am continuing further here what is concept that proof reading concept we will say proof reading or uh, uh, dna repair in mechanism we are going to see what is it proof reading suppose for example for example here the there is a little change in the nucleotide arrangement of the nucleotide suppose in case uh, instead of dmp okay there dgmp has went then this wrong nucleotides base pairing here c came here t came actually wherever adenine will be there the thymine should be there wherever guanine will be there the cytosine should be there suppose in case if these nucleotides are wrong okay they have arranged in wrong method then that is repaired by the enzyme called as dna polymerase 4 and 5 okay dna polymerase enzyme 4 and 5 these are the enzymes which are repairing the wrong nucleotides and making them to go in a correct sequence that is the dna polymerase 4 and 5 is they are the enzymes which are making the wrong nucleotides and uh, these which are removing the wrong nucleotides and these wrong nucleotides are corrected by the enzymes and making them to go in a correct sequence understood so this completes your semi conservative replication okay hope so you have understood the complete uh, process here the next concept what we are going to say is experimental proof for the dna replication or semi conservative replication well here students we are going to see the experimental proof for semi conservative replication what we are going to see here experimental proof for semi conservative replication now you people have seen that how the semi conservative replication occurs in the eukaryotes that mechanism what i have shown in the form of y shaped replication book that is in the eukaryotes now we are going to see in the prokaryotes that how the dna will be acting as a genetic material especially by taking the bacteria called as e coli e coli is the escherichia coli bacteria that bacteria has been taken for this experiment and the other one is radioactive isotope that is nitrogen okay radioactive isotope nitrogen is taken for this experiment they have seen that how the normal dna is differing from the radioactive isotope dna okay so the normal dna of the 14th generation they have taken so before going to this experiment in detail who has proposed this one the meisers and stam are the scientist who has propo proposed this experiment or the experimental proof for dna replication 
Wiesel and Einstein are the scientists. They have taken, they have cultured the E. coli bacteria in the radioactive isotope nitrogen as a source. Okay. And then what happens normally, what E. coli bacteria is grown in the culture only, that same culture is shifted to the DNA. That means DNA is absorbing that same radioactive isotope. And then in the uh, daughter's uh, DNA, that is they are going to form the same process. See here, the original parental DNA is cultured in the radioactive isotope nitrogen as a source. Okay. Further, the 14th generation of the E. coli bacteria. Students, 14th generation of the E. coli bacteria means what? E. coli bacteria is undergoing the replication by the binary fission. So, first one parental cell will be there. From the one, two daughter cells will be produced. From the two, four daughter cells will be produced. From the four, eight. From eight, sixteen. Sixteen, two. Like that. Okay, continue. 14th generation, up to 14 generation cells DNA they have taken and they have just cultured in that. Okay. See here, heavy DNA molecule can be differentiated from normal DNA by density gradient centrifugation. What is the density centri uh, gradient centrifugation? That is, there is a variation in the temperature, concentration, and that is the variation in the temperature and maybe the concentration. Okay. So, the this process, okay, this process may increase the generation or may decrease the generation. Okay, the process may increase the generation or decrease the generation. See here, performed, the experimental proof has been performed by the scientist called as measles and Stahl in E. coli. And this E. coli bacteria was grown in a medium containing the radioactive isotope as a nitrogen source. Okay. E. coli bacteria is grown in a culture media which is consisting of nitrogen as a source. Okay. After this, after this what they will do? The heavy DNA molecule. Now this has been become heavy. Okay. That nitrogen DNA content has become heavy now. That heavy DNA molecule is separated from a normal DNA. See here students. Here two E. coli bacteria will be there. Okay. This E. coli bacteria is grown in the nitrogen. Okay. Another E. coli bacteria will be there. So another E. coli bacteria is normal. Okay. Another E. coli bacteria is normal. So this is heavy. This is normal. Okay. This is heavy. The bacteria which is grown in the nitrogen content is heavy. And the other bacteria is normal. How it is differentiated? By the density gradient centrifugation. That is by the variation. It may be increasing or decreasing. The temperature and the concentration may be increasing and may be decreasing. Based on that, based on that, we are going to differentiate the nitrogen, uh, the heavy DNA and the normal DNA. So, how that uh, density gradient is variation occurring? That is cesium chloride as the solution. Cesium chloride solution is the solution which is making the DNA normal, which is making the differentiation between the normal DNA and the heavy DNA. Cesium chloride is a solution which is making the differentiation between the normal DNA and the heavy DNA. Then, the cells are again transferred to a medium with 14th nitrogen as nitrogen source. Samples were taken from this media and the DNA was extracted. Now these cells, normal cells are once again grown in the where 14th radioactive nitrogen. Okay, 14th radioactive nitrogen. Okay, then these are mixed with this nitrogen, 15 nitrogen. 15 and 14, they are mixing. After the mixing, what happens? The one strand of the 14th generation DNA will be coming. One strand of the 15th generation, that means 15 nitrogen DNA will be coming. One strand is the 14 nitrogen DNA. Another strand is the 15 nitrogen DNA. So this is called as hybrid DNA. What do we call for this? Hybrid DNA. Further, these hybrids DNA are once again grown in the culture media. Further, this hybrid DNA are once again grown in the culture media. And here we are going to see purely 
14 nitrogen radioactive 14 nitrogen DNA and radioactive 15 nitrogen DNA purely we are going to see here see a radioactive isotope so two daughter cells are having the 15 nitrogen and 14 nitrogen DNA and the two daughter cells are purely 14 uh, nitrogen DNA as a radioactive source okay so this radioactivity is transferred from the parental cell this radioactivity is transferred from the parental cell and uh, to the daughter cells. So that's why it is uh, proved that the DNA will be acting as a genetic material. What it is proved? The DNA will be acting as a genetic material. Okay. So this is the experiment which has been done by the scientist called as measles and Einstein. This is not important for the theory but it is very Concentrate, uh, just you have to concentrate for the meat. It is not at all asked till now. It is not at all asked for the theory. But just you have to remember for the meat exam. So what this experimental proof is saying? First, the E. coli bacteria is grown in the heavy nitrogen medium. Then normal E. coli bacteria and heavy E. coli bacteria are differentiated by the cesium chloride solution. Then then not that uh, normal E. coli bacteria once again grown in the nitrogen content consisting of radioactivity 14. Okay, radioactive isotope 14. Then that 14 radioactive isotope nitrogen, 15 radioactive isotope nitrogen are grown in, once again in a new culture media. There the character has been transferred. After the transferring of the character, first generation DNA what it will be having? One strand of 14 nitrogen DNA and the strand of 15 nitrogen DNA. So that is called as hybrid densities. What do we call for that? Hybrid densities. Then once again these hybrid DNA it is grown cultured in the next culture media. Then what happens? Once again the two uh, the 50-50 what do we say? Okay phenotypic and genotypic ratio if we see. The one strand of radioactive 40, uh, 14 nitrogen DNA will be coming. One strand of radioactive 15 nitrogen DNA will be coming. So like that two daughter cells are there. Then other two daughter cells are purely 14 radioactive nitrogen. So this is based on the Mendel's uh, uh, experiment. Okay, This is completely based on the Mendel's experiment. There, there what you have seen the tall uh, uh, green uh, plants and uh, wrinkled yellow seeds like that examples you people have seen okay likewise here they have shown the DNA as an example in the E. coli bacteria got so this is very uh, not much important for the theory but for the need you have to just concentrate on this okay so this is the experiment which has been proved that the DNA will be acting as a genetic material got students the so next concept what we are going to see that is the function of the DNA now this uh, experiment has been concluded by saying that very similar experiments has been done by the scientist called as Taylor and his colleagues to see the newly synthesized DNA in the uh, Vichia faba by using the radioactive thymidine. Okay. So experimental proof are so many here. Okay, this is the one easy experimental proof what uh, missiles and stall has been shown to you people by taking the E. coli bacteria. But other scientists like Taylor and his colleagues, okay, Taylor and his colleagues has used the radioactive thymidine, okay. What for they have used? That is to detect the newly synthesized DNA in the chromosomes. That is in the plant called as Vichia faba or faba beans we will say okay so this is the experimental proof of the to show the dna as a semi conservative replication now last concept of the dna we are going to see next is we are going to start the rna okay so what last concept of the dna is that is functions of the dna what is the last concept here functions of the dna so dna is the material which is carrying the hereditary characters from one generation to the another generation. What DNA is doing? It is carrying the hereditary characters from one generation to the another generation. It is acting as a genetic material. 
DNA will be acting as a genetic material. Then, second one, it controls the whole cellular activity. Okay, it controls the whole cellular activity of the organism. So that is why it is called as controlling cell. Okay, controlling cell we will call or master molecule of life we will call or it is also called as master molecule of life okay it is also called as what master molecule of life then next is it is acting as a thread of life why it is acting as a thread of life why because it is helping for the synthesis of protein the dna is helping for the protein synthesis so it is called as thread of life what do we call for this it is called as thread of life so dna will be acting as a genetic material why because it is carrying the hereditary characters from one generation to the another generation then second function is we are going to see that it controls the complete cellular activity of the organism so we are calling it as a controlling cell or master molecule of the life it is also called as a thread of life why do we call it as a thread of life because it is helping for the protein synthesis in the organisms so since it is helping for the protein synthesis in the organisms it is also called as thread of life understood so this is the function of the dna now students till now what we have seen complete dna we have seen dna structure we have seen dna chemical composition we have seen nucleosides of dna nucleotides of dna then we have seen dna as a genetic material by three experiments that is griffith experiment avery experiment and the uh, hershey and chase experiment we have seen then we have seen the semi conservative replication process then experimental proof for dna semi conservative replication and lastly we people have seen the functions of the dna and also we people have seen dna packaging so all these concepts of the dna have been completed in the today's class in the next class we will start the rna and its types and also the process of transcription and the translation